Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Can't Each Size. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll know that I uh, officially kicked Liss off of our podcast for doubling down on her take uh, that the Lightning reverse retro jerseys stink. Um, so now I am today joined by Mikey Stevens, Michael Stevens of the Hockey News Sports Illustrated. Mikey, my brother, how are you? I'm I'm doing swimmingly, Brad. I'm yeah. doing great. Yeah. What's great is that right as you were doing that intro, I went to go scratch my ear, headphone fell out, couldn't hear a single <laughs> word you were saying, came right in blind. So I'm just going to assume that you said nothing but really nice things about me, and uh, and we'll go from there. I did. I actually chirped my, my co-host, who isn't here today, okay. uh, because the reasoning is I kicked her off of the show because she said that the, li- the uh, Lightning's reverse retro jersey stinks, and she doubled down on that take after I was like, how can you hate this? It is, it is, the the Lightning Reverse Retro jersey is like, it's supposed to be like hokey, you know? I, like, I, it, that's what makes it good. The the thing that I don't understand, sorry, this is a, such a weird thing to start off no, on, but the, the thing, the thing to, that I don't get it is that she is so, so very much pro white jerseys. And, mm. and that is like the white version of that hokey jersey. And she's like, yeah. no, I hate it. The other white jersey that she said she hated, the Bruins. Oh, get out. I'm glad she's gone. <laughs> oh, man, this is – dude, the Bru- – as, as, mu- as much as it pains me to say a single positive thing about the Bruins, con- considering what's happened oh, the last yeah. couple weeks, and we'll – I'm assuming we'll get into that. We, oh, we certainly will. <laughs> but those – I got to I gotta give them credit where credit's due. Those, those like, Pooh Bear jerseys, they're great. I, I, I have them high in my rankings because, you know, I love it when a, a, a mascot's just a, just a funny little guy. He's just, you know? a little, he's just a little dude. He's just hanging out he looks there. looks like a little stinker, you she, know, like he's just chilling. I think she, I'm pretty sure she said that something along the lines of like, I don't like the bear. It's it's not fun. It's not funny. I kind of like she said something. She likes the like striping or not the striping, the like the stuff on the bottom of the jersey. But she yeah. didn't like the shoulders and like, I don't know. I just don't get it. I don't understand. I loved when that jersey first came out, uh, but I do understand why the yellow was a little bit too much. But with white, like it's it's just the classy version yes. of, of a of a stinky little guy on the front, you know? That's a great that's a great way to say it. It's like the <laughs> it's it's like the business casual version of it, you know? Like it's just a little step up. It's you're able to like wear it in public. You know, the 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 yellow one was like it's almost too hokey you know like it's almost too sort of like ridiculous but like the thing about reverse retro is like we're supposed to be transported back to like you know the era the retro era yeah you know i I that's what i love i absolutely love that like this kind of this one's theme more or less was like 90s like like it it, it felt very 90s which like i i don't know i like we're we're almost the same age so it's it's like 90s kids remember but also, it was it's a like, little, yeah. It was it, it was a little before our time, I think, because I'm 96, you're in 97, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Well, for me though, it's like that. Those jerseys are like it, they they bring up memories of me playing like NHL 2002, yes, and just choosing the most absurd jerseys I can find, which include, of course, the Lightning jersey. And like, yeah, yeah when you're playing as the Bruins, you got to use the Pooh Bear jersey. It's, it's, it reminds me of hockey cards. Like it reminds oh, me of yeah. the hockey cards that I would uh, that I would like buy <laughs> after a game in the vending machines. And like I don't know, I'm trying to like Byron Defoe would be would have like <laughs> would be wearing. I'm trying to think of the most random Bruins like, but like he'd be wearing the Pooh Bear jersey in like this just terrible hockey card that you'd get. Like it's it, that's what's supposed to bring back these like. I, I hated the teams who just went like who just used their own exact logo. And then yeah. like sort of did some like unless it's like the Habs or whatever, because like, you know, they've only had one logo. Or you got to do what you got to do, right? Exactly. But like for a team like the Lightning, for a team, even like the Bruins, but I don't know, like especially a team like the Jets, like, you know, where the old <sighs> logo and the old jerseys are just so perfect. Like they're so amazing. Um, I love how they went back. They like they they captured the essence, like the reverse retro. You're supposed to you're supposed to look at it and go like, oh, this is basically like. Kind of like stepping back in time, but also like a remix of it. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, like speaking about the Bruins, uh, I think. Oh boy. Un- I think unfortunately, the, the this has to be the first thing we hop into. It has to. Um, yeah. You mentioned, uh, you know, they've been doing some some wacky things over the past few weeks, but really, it was just this weekend. Like, I'm pretty sure the, all of this shit started on on Friday when uh, when uh, if if you guys haven't heard. The Boston Bruins signed uh, Mitchell Miller, former 
uh, was he like a uh, he was a first round pick for the fourth round pick. he was a fourth round pick. Oh, my God. He was my su- I think he was supposed to go in the second. Oh, but I'm, like because he was a criminal. They were able to get him in the fourth. Right, right. I'm mixing up with him up with Logan Mayu, the other uh, dog. Oh, shit. yeah. You know, <laughs> there's just because there's so many fucking <laughs> shitheads in the league. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, the Bruins yeah. decided they, they thought they could get away with signing Mitchell Miller, the, uh, you know, previously convicted in juvenile court of um what was he what was he even it was one count of one count of assault and then one count of violating the ohio safe schools act <laughs> at least it was only one count oh <laughs> Jeez. yeah but no like well i i this is it's insane that since the last time we recorded which was last week um and again like i said only over the weekend we saw this this signing happen and then immediately like this is the only good thing i can say about this happening was that immediately everyone everyone was like what the fuck man like what are you yeah who who do you think you are and since then obviously they've decided you know they can't go forward um mikey wrote a a fantastic article on uh on the hockey news you should go check it out uh about hockey culture along with uh the mitchell miller signing um anyways i'm just gonna let mikey kind of go off here um, because we both have some thoughts on uh, this entire situation, uh, but Mikey, I'm I'm letting you off the uh, off the chain, letting the dog loose. Go off, man. <laughs> woof woof. I'm gonna start gonna start barking like DMX on the track. Hell yeah. Um, no, I, I was actually I was actually really like interested to hear your thoughts on it too, just because you know, in, in listeners, in case you didn't know, Brad and I are actually friends. So. Yeah. You know, we, but, but, you know, we weren't able to really chat about this because things are going crazy. It is fun. When did you last record your episode? Uh, like, like your we, last, we record once a week. So, like, literally a week ago. So, on like Sunday. a week ago today? Yeah. We, well, we usually record on Sunday, release on, on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out yesterday for us. We're recording on Monday. We'll probably release it later tonight. So, it's wild that, like, since the, since your last episode recorded, like, which was basically like a, a calendar week, yeah. like, all of this, this had, like, the this, Bruins signed Mitchell Miller. The team had all the like. There was all the fallout, and then it ended within that span. Yeah, like, yeah. It, insane. It's look at it, everything that like every everyone. You know, I could sit here and say like you know how terrible it is and go over his actions and all that, and you know, but like we've already we've already done that. You know, like it's important. It's important to bang the drum that this guy is a, like a legitimate. Like he's a piece of shit. Like he really a, is a criminal. <laughs> Literally, he's a, a criminal. He's a criminal. <laughs> But also, like, and we can go through how the the um, like the brew or, or I guess in their statement, the Bruins tried to like or tried to cover it up and say like, it was just in one you know incident where an isolated incident uh, uh, was wasn't true. Like it was like literally years of torture, yeah. like racial, physical, uh, mental, and also because of the fact that he, he you know that the urinal thing where he he yeah. dipped a uh, you know a lollipop in the urinal for us to eat it like because he then had to take STD tests after that to make sure that it was okay. It's also a sexual nature, yeah. like yes. Yeah. So everything you could do, everyone knows that it's a piece of shit. What what I want to talk about is just ha- is like this might be the stupidest thing an NHL team has ever done in history. Like this, I, one of the most embarrassing for sure. Like hundred percent. Here's the thing. If you know you do something and then immediately, uh, first of all, your all of your players are like, "What the fuck, man? Yeah. Like this is not okay." Like obviously, Bergeron, Marchand, Felino, all those guys come out and be like, "This is." I was in front of them asking those questions, and believe me, they were not happy. Like, oh. <laughs> well, because they they probably had to answer it like multiple times. But like, that's one thing. But when Gary, motherfucking Bettman, Gary Bettman comes out and is like. I, uh, we weren't consulted on this. Uh, and basically, puts but then out that's put- also kind of a lie. Is it? Yeah, because because okay. So the funny thing is, there's so many people in here. Like you know, like the uh, the Mister Me Seeks thing, where it's like he wrote me into this. No, he wrote <laughs> me into this. Like that's basically what this is. Because so so they came out and and Gary Bettman, you know, he's speaking uh, uh, in Finland for the Global Series, and he was asked, you know, like were you consulted? And he said no, like the NHL wasn't consulted, so they went ahead with it. But apparently, um, on the Wednesday before the the signing that was on fl- like Friday, uh, the Bruins ran this by Bill Daly. So oh. So like that, at least that's what Cam Neely said in his in his press conference today. So now there's multiple things going like 
So here's 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 why I think is like this this is legitimately like the stupid I think this is the stupidest thing an NHL team's ever done. Like we can we can debate about all the other atrocities really that have happened in the in the past couple or that have been uncovered at least in the past like two three years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm talking about like from a pure like like you look at the intent and then you look at the outcome. And you look at the intent, you look at the process, and you look at the outcome, and then you look at the 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 aftermath. I think from all those perspectives, this is the dumbest thing an angel team has done. They signed a player who would only really improve their like title odds a little bit. And it wouldn't happen until like two or three years down the line. Um, and they did it in the worst possible way because they did it a day before the team was supposed to play on hockey night in Canada in Toronto. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, the optics are just, in, it's insane. And it's, it's like such a lack of awareness for the situation the team is in. Like it, I, yeah. I, like Brad, I'm t- I was there. Like I was at the <laughs> rink. I was asking these questions. Like, believe me after the shock and like, this is one of, I, I've been really like the Cal beach thing made me really sad. You know, the, the, yeah. like there's a lot of, but this is, I would say this, this saga, or at least learning the news of this on Friday is maybe like. I can't remember the last time like the sport of hockey and specifically the NHL has made me that mad. I was like ready to punch a wall. Like I was pissed. Oh, absolutely. And, Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. And, and I was, I was pre- preparing for me for Bruins media veil the next day, like fucking Eminem preparing for a rap battle. <laughs> like, like you're going to battle. <laughs> like, like mom spaghetti was on my shirt, you know, like it was, and, and it didn't disappoint. I was like, so I, we're waiting outside the Bruins room. Right. We're, we're waiting because now now we have open open rooms, so which is great. Um, and it took like an extra half an hour for them to like kind of let us in. Like it was a long time. Also, apparently there are crimes happening on my street right now. Oh, no. If you're listening <laughs> to this in the car, that's not you. Don't worry. Don't pull over. Um, <laughs> we're waiting. A- <laughs> and there are a shitload of media there. Like a, like they really messed this up because normally there's a lot of media in Toronto. Today was a lot more. Everyone was out of the woodwork. Elliot Friedman was there. Pierre Lebrun was there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, there, there was just like everyone who could be there, everyone who, you know, maybe takes the option or maybe doesn't go to the morning skate or maybe whatever. Like it was all hands on deck. All of the Bruins traveling media were there, too. Like like it was it was a point of like like Jack Edwards was it was waiting there. Like, ev- you know, everyone. And um, and, and they wait forever. And then I hear like yelling coming from like a corridor and I like peer down and it's the Bruins PR guy and he's on the phone and he's screaming at someone at the top of his lungs going like you effed up (laughs) and I'm going like, Oh, this is going, this is starting great. This is, this is fantastic. And they wait for like, I would say like they make us wait like a half an hour extra before they open up the Bruins room. And they did that so that all the players could clear out except for uh, uh, Bergeron Marshawn, uh, Pasternak and, and Felino. And not a lot of people went around Pasternak. It was mainly, uh, it was mainly Bergeron to start then, then Marshawn and then Felino. And look, the thing about the Bruins is that they have like, like their thing is built on culture. Yeah, like absolutely. A hundred percent. Like that's, what's dev- that's, what's defined the Bruins as they are in like the modern era is the culture that they built. Everyone that goes in, you know, you either, you know, there's even, even to the detriment, there's that friggin' Tyler Sagan clip of the yeah. guys being like, he's really good, but does he fit our culture? Is he a you know? Bruin, like, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But like they, but that fucking matters to them. Like that's something like as, as hokey and dumb as it is in there, like, like uh, in, in that clip, at least. And you know, any clip that Peter Shirelli's part of is usually pretty dumb, but like <laughs> that, but I mean like as, as dumb as you would, as you would think that is there, like they, th- that matters to them. Like that people who haven't fit in that culture have been removed, you know? And, and that's something that in the past, that's something they really wanted to make a point of. Um, and, and another one of that too, is like, you know, they're all about like coming together as a team, but these players like an and absolute credit to them, like, yeah. I, like this will be, will be remembered for this is that they like defied the front office. They were yeah. not. Br- yeah. They, 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 yeah. Like they just completely were like, this is not okay. This is not okay with us. This is not okay with the team. Like, this goes against everything we stand for was the biggest thing. Yeah, exactly. And that was echoed by everyone. That was echoed by that. That was echoed by Marshawn. That was echoed by by Bergeron. That was echoed, echoed by Foligno. Like the three main leaders on that team, that at least front facing. Um, and then and then you're like you're learning stuff. Like you know, Ber, like Bergeron was was approached by it. They asked him about it. And he said he didn't he didn't want them to do it, and they still went ahead and did it. You know. Yeah. Uh, like, didn't didn't he have like kind of like had preemptively been like 
no, like had had yeah. had voiced th- that he was like had concerns on it and was like, I don't want this to happen. Yes. So they went to him like like I, th- I think, again, on the Wednesday. So like, Wednesday was their consulting day, apparently, because they decided <laughs> to, you know, like Wednesday was the day that they reached out to everyone and said, hey, are we fucking up with this? And everyone went, yes. And they went, all right, cool. We're going to do it anyway. Here, if you have to ask, are we fucking up by doing this? That's usually a good sign, you know? <laughs> If like, in the introductory press conference for the guy, you have to go, I don't think, I can't tell oh you if this God. was the right decision. Maybe it's not oh the right my... decision, Don. And so, and then Jim Montgomery, even like the head coach, he was, his answers, like he was, you could tell he was fucking mad that he had to a- <laughs> answer these. You could tell because it's also, it's one thing that like you have, like, this is just a terrible situation in, in, in a vacuum. It's another thing that like, you're going into Toronto. Um, it's a divisional matchup, hockey night can everything, but also like when you're a team that's as good as the Bruins have been to start the season, when you're fucking 10 and one and you're going into Toronto for hockey night in Canada, you're expecting to be ladled like the softball questions where you get to basically like pat yourself on the back yeah. t- and talk about how, you know, how your commitment to winning is really like powered your success. And instead this dude had to stand here and talk about a, f- a shithead criminal. And you could tell that he was pissed. And and he also revealed he wasn't included in the vetting process. So they didn't run it. So I guess they ran it by their captain. He said no. They didn't run it by their coach. According, according to, uh, well, they didn't run by the family, that's for sure. And then according to Gary yeah. Batman, they didn't run it by the NHL or the AHL where he was supposed to report. <laughs> like, it's this ins- is the stupidest thing that's ever happened. It's insane the amount of like. Well, I'm going to call it content for lack of a better term. Like there's just so much, there's so many layers to this. Like we haven't even touched on the fact that like, I know you kind of mentioned before that the agent, you know, had said, you know, it was, it was was (laughs) one incident, but then also uh, there was, you know, mention of like, you know, uh, since, you know, since the incident, uh, you know, Mitchell has gone on to work with these organizations and, um, you know, he's, he's really trying his best to do uh, his part to become a better person. And like, Three of the four organizations listed were, uh, I'm pretty sure, mandated by his community service. Yes, once again, court mandated for his court mandated community service. And I think one of them was the it's either the Carnegie Institute or the Carnegie Initiative. It was, and it was the Carnegie Initiative. Yeah. And they came out and they were like, um, no, he didn't. They're like, we've we've met with him. We haven't wor- He hasn't worked with us. Like so like. For for him for like everyone at everyone at every level this failed because except for the players obviously but like like for for the agent to come out and 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 stomp his foot in the ground and be like no this is a good guy he's done this this and this and then like not think that it'll take two seconds for someone to Google these this publicly available information and realize oh all of like your argument is based on the fact that he's be he is like a redeemed person because he's been working with these organizations and then it's public publicly available knowledge. For you to go and realize, oh, a court, a judge forced him to do this. If he didn't do this, he would be subject to further discipline. So even this volunteer stuff that he's doing, it's 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 <laughs> for his own gain. I, I, like, I, fuck I, this I, kid, man. I genuinely don't even know what to say about all this. Like, it's just like, I know it's it's so baffling that this is a situation that happened. And, it, and again, that it came and went so quickly, like. This like like it's it's all those reasons that like truly from from what you from what you from what the 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 risk reward scenario from what the best case scenario was from an on ice perspective to the process to the fallout to the handling of it to the PR to everything to the timing to 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 like the team's reactions because like even the Bru- like one of the Bruins collegiate scouts has been revealed that like all his likes are filled with Mitchell Miller support tweets and stuff. Uh, Fantastic. So like he's even, which is terrific. <laughs> like everything from top to bottom was not only done in like the worst way possible. It was done in the stupidest way possible. Like, like just cataclysmically dumb. I don't like, and, and what's funny too is, is even the, even like this state, even when they did this, when they, when they cut the cord, when they when they let him when they let Mitchell Miller go when they said no we're not doing and by the way there's gonna be like lawsuits because of this oh I'm sure like he's gonna yeah. sue the shit out of the Bruins and like I don't know this for a fact but like he would be dumb not to you know 
like like he, you can't just void a contract because of this stuff like it's you can't go oh no never mind like we we didn't ridiculous. look into it enough <laughs> yeah like, like first of all they knew well, yeah absolutely like but in a case where like maybe they sign him and then he does something shitty then you know you might have cause but like this is purely just based on on the Boston Bruins not giving a shit about what happened not giving a shit mm-hmm. enough to do the like either they did the research and just said eh, whatever, good enough. Um, or they just didn't do enough, like, stone turning to be like, okay, is this a good idea or not? Which, of course, they asked people, they said no, and they went and did it anyways. And their their basis is that, like, they found out that it was, like, that they thought it was just the lollipop incident, basically. That's what they thought. Oh. And, it, and, that, and that's what they're basing it on. When, when Mitchell Miller's rights were revoked, by the by the Arizona Coyotes when he was drafted before his rights were even revoked like the reason why they were revoked was not just the lollipop incident it was everything else that happened on top of that it was a torment that began when those when him and his victim were in the second grade everyone knew like the Bruins and the Bruins are one of the original six teams they're one they're they're a massive market you know they're they're one of the most connected teams out there that, like for them to just again, like I don't know for a, I can't say it for a fact, but unless they like deliberately put their head in the sand and just went like la la la, I'm not gonna listen to this every time someone brought Mitchell Miller's name up for the last two years, um, like they like they knew and they're yeah. using this as as and then and then included in that statement too after that, Cam Neely decides to get in his soapbox and go, well you know let me teach you kids a lesson. As a father. <laughs> oh my god, I I lost it when I read this. <laughs> when I read the words as a father, I audibly went fuck off in my like are you kidding me? And he and and to refer to like racist behavior and like straight up like just harassment and and abuse and assault in every form as like irresponsible behavior I think the term was or something like that. Like I don't even know what to say, man. Like it, it unbelievable. It's it's insane. And then even at, at like in, in the end of like they have they didn't reach out to the the, the family. Yeah, they of the still victim. haven't. And they still well, they but but what they did was was they at the mm-hmm. end of, of their uh, we're cutting ties with Mitchell Miller uh, statement. They said something along the lines of, uh, OK, here it is to Isaiah and his family. My deepest apologies if this oh, yeah. signing made you and other victims feel unseen and unheard. We apologize for the deep hurt and impact we have caused, which is like a totally fine apology if you do not include the word if. Like yeah. to, as, as a general statement to be like, hey, listen, we we apologize for this. You know, we sh- we fucked up kind of thing. But mm-hmm. just it's it's literally a t- like a two letter long word that completely just takes it all away. It just negates everything yeah. that comes before and after it. It, and that is the worst type of apology. It not just in PR, but in life. Yeah. Like when, like you're coming, you're coming to Toronto. I'm going to see you on on Thursday. Hell yeah. And if you if if when when you show up, I immediately just start beating your ass, and then like, you know, and then just like <laughs> I don't know, like piss on you and like burn all your shit, and then go like, well, you know, Brad, I'm sorry if that th- if that behavior really hurt you. I'm sorry if it, like. <laughs> because you're 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 like supposing that it, it you're supposing that it's up for debate whether or not it hurt you. It's not. Here's we know it's not. If, if if you're cutting ties with this player because you know the backlash was too much, why do you need to include the word if? Like what? Like it's 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 almost like it's their tiny way of going. We still think we were right. You know. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Uh, I Here's just the thing. don't get it. I I don't get it either. And and the thing that you need to do in these situations is just like just be as transparent as possible. Just come clean, and then you will maybe maybe have some chance of people forgiving you, like or not forgiving you, but like at least sort of like working with you on the path to forgiveness, like understanding. Uh, maybe I don't know, or some yes, like, some some sort of of you know positive thing looking at you. A hundred percent. Like you're like you're in a relationship, you know, if you ever really mess up, you know, like, is never. it going to really, yeah, you would never, cause you're a, per- <laughs> you're, you know, you're a perfect uh, partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, But like, if you ever, 
you know, I've I've contrary to popular belief, I have been in relationships before in the past. And, <laughs> your, uh, your wife did leave you. <laughs> my my life did leave. My wife did leave me. Uh, not to brag or anything, but um, and and like, if you're there and and you make a mistake, the best way to, the best way to to negate the the disastrous effects of your mis- of your mistake, if you of your upsetting of another party, is mm-hmm. to just be like, you're right. I completely messed up. I'm so sorry. Like yeah. like just that, not again. like won't happen again. I'm so sorry. You're a hundred percent right. I messed up. I'm, I want to own up to it. I take responsibility. Here, you know, here's, it was just a here, here's some, some chocolates. Uh, and, and in the Bruins case, you know, maybe they donate to some, some charity exactly. and, and show, you know, maybe they are actually remorseful of, of their decision. Exactly. You don't go and you go like, yeah, this is terrible. I'm really sorry if you felt bad about this. Um, anyway, we're, we're doing our re- reverse retro jerseys tonight. So let's get all hyped. Bruins nation rise up. Roar. <laughs> it's the, look, it's the Pooh bear. <laughs> it's the Pooh bear. Look guys, it's the Pooh bear. No, like they, they handled from every step from the start to the end. Every single step was the dumbest. It was not just like, it was not just the worst way to do it. It was the dumbest way to do it. And now they are going to like, they're like, they're going to be sued for this. It's going to probably cost the, the, the organization financially, Someone will likely lose their job. It should be Cam Neely because Don Sweeney, like I, I, and I hope in this case, he just based on how he like looked in his words and his demeanor, yeah. it didn't look like he was really on board with it either. I don't want to know if I want to give him the benefit of the doubt in that sense, but like just from I was rudimentary gonna say, body we, language, we don't know exactly who, you know, it, it hasn't come out yet, at least, you know, whose decision or whose initiate like initiative yes. it was to but if you do a if, if, if sorry to interrupt you but if you do if you do like a like a process of elimination like it wasn't the coach it wasn't the players the, the gm GM's, seemed seemed a little the, little upset yeah the gm said on multiple occasions i don't know if this is the right decision um so uh, i have a feel like it's got it's it's starting to look like cam neely's doing um and and like it, this, just adversely like affected them on the ice. Like they yeah. they played the Bruins played like probably their worst game of the year against the Leafs. You know that night and the Leafs beat them. And look, uh, uh, like the Le- we'll get into. I guess we'll do a Leafs check in a little bit. But like, <laughs> yep, we will. <laughs> but but like, look, the Leafs were a struggling team before that game. Mm-hmm. Like the Bruins, based on everything, should have beat them. They did absolutely. Didn't. And so it, you know, it's it's just the most. I don't under like I don't understand why they would do this. It made no sense. It made no sense from a hockey perspective too. Like yes, he's very good, but like he won't even be ready to play in the NHL for like two three years. The, the like the the organization like the 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 locker room wasn't going to accept him. They were basically all all ready to like just say no to this guy. Um, and you did you did it right before you were heading into like the belly of the media beast. And you and you did it while your team was riding like the hottest start in like franchise history, and about to play and, a struggling Leafs team. Yes, who is like also maybe your biggest divisional rival. Yeah, and then even on top of that, like the vibes in Boston before this were like so immaculate this year. Fucking Patrice Bergeron resigned for two point five million dollars. Like David Krejci came back. You know everything's and even even though all of your good players are like most of your good players are hurt. Like even on top of that, Brad Marchand came back from injury, like a month ahead yeah. of schedule. Like you're, you know, at, things are going really well in Boston and you just like, you just took a shit in it. Like, I don't get it. Like it, it doesn't make, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't get it. Someone who, like their heads need to be, need to roll for this. Who chose to piss in the pool? That's the question. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> It really like I don't I don't get it like yeah you you just you could have simply used a a you could have simply used a bathroom yeah what do you mean or, way easier or just held it until you got home <laughs> and, exactly and, and... or just did anything but what you did <laughs> basically yeah um and they what they did is they pissed like butters where they like stood outside <laughs> the pool and then like held up their shirt yeah just, like, it, there's unbelievable a, there's a very large difference between peeing in the pool and peeing into the pool. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, one. You know the, is it <laughs> like the inc- the Incredibles meme where it's like just Mister Incredible looking great, and it's like peeing in the pool, and then it's like <laughs> Mister Incredible with like with like a skull as a face, be like pissing into the pool. Ooh. <laughs> 
Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that, I I feel like that's enough. Yeah, Mitchell I was Miller gonna say. Talk. Um, fuck, let, let's just let's just end it with a good fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. I agree. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, you know, again to move on naturally, you know the the mm-hmm. the, the Bruins were playing the Leafs, and uh, you do, you you do you do kind of cover that team occasionally, so. Uh, <laughs> so I figured it is time to, uh, to get just kind of, uh, a barometer, um, on previous shows, we were kind of talking about how the Leafs were just kind of spiraling. Um, mm-hmm. now at this point, you know, they had a couple wins this weekend, obviously against, uh, against the Bruins, against, um, the care the hurricanes in a game that was less than 24 hours later. Um, what is the feeling around the team now that we've had a second to exhale? I feel like a lot of times in in the dangle Navy chat when we're, where we're all losing, everyone's losing their mind about the Leafs. Yeah. I feel like I'm the one who's like, take a breath, please. You um, are, cause you're a new, you're, you're like the most neutral party in there. You don't yeah. give a shit either way. really. <laughs> I don't. Cause either yeah. way it's, it's like either, either I get to see my, my friends, uh, you know, enjoying their favorite teams, mm-hmm. uh, or, uh, I get to watch them all <laughs> be miserable, Lose which is, the fucking which is, kind which is of fun, equally fun, which is very fun. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, how, how are we feeling in Leafland? Look, man, every like as, look, the goaltending situation is maybe not the best. Like an, an Eric Shalgren, Keith Petrozelli pair uh tandem is somewhat of a nightmare. Um, but I mean, just from a vibes perspective, excuse me, just from a vibes perspective, like it is it you go from a week ago today, um man, just a just a total 180. Like yeah. I, when you know, like last Monday the Leafs were coming home from the West coast road trip. So they were coming home from <laughs> losing from literally they were coming home from, from taking two points in, in a pos- out of a possible eight against like other than Vegas um, against like three lottery teams and also all four teams who missed the playoffs last year. And now they, they, they just pistol whip the, the, the flyers at home. Uh, uh, the, the flies I mean, were coming off to be fair they as they to. should as they should but that's what i was saying yeah like they were su- they were supposed to do that mm-hmm. but that win in itself came in the most like vibe changing way mm-hmm. like in the in the most positive way because yes it was like it was a win but it, it was on home ice that's great but like john Tavares, your captain came out and put on probably his best game as a leaf mm-hmm. ever um when like at when, at a time when the team was possibly like outside of first round losses, like possibly at its lowest in terms of like the middle of the regular season. Um, so he came out, he put the team on his back. Matthews got back going. He got a goal. Marner got two assists. And then on top of that, the team, like uh, multiple team uh, uh, leaders came out and stood up for Matthews and beat the shit out of a couple of flyers guys. Like, like Mark <laughs> Giordano is the, is the oldest skating player in the NHL. And he like suplexed Travis Konechny out of nowhere and then, and then on top of that, decided to like th- basically throw the gloves and like tackled someone down. Like he was, it, that was great. And Michael Bunting on top of that too was like fighting everybody. Like it was just that you could tell going into the room after the game, like that was like the vibes were just different. I know I've said vibes a lot, but like that is what this team operates on. I think that's vibes is a real thing. It, it absolutely is. Oh, a it real is. Thing. It's, it's, and I think. No, no, sorry. Go I, ahead. I was just gonna say it's it's absolutely a real thing, and we we've, we've talked about it on this on this podcast before that vibes are like so important to uh, a team. One of the things I was gonna say really quickly was that game had like you know the Leafs winning kind of starts their upward traje- trajectory. Yes, but man, oh man, if they would have lost that game, oh my god, I I, I honestly. I, I legitimately don't know what the reaction would have been. I, I think heads would have rolled. Like, I genuinely think that, like, you could have seen some sort of move, some sort of firing. Like, uh, things were getting dire. And it's crazy to, to think that, like, uh you know, a game in November, at the start of November against the Flyers is is a statement game. And a lot of people yeah. were, 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 were given the we're least shit for it, that. Yeah. But it was. Like, it abs- it was... An import- it was such an important game for them to win to kind of get back on their feet. Um, yeah, I've, I I don't know. I just it's it's insane to me to think what could have happened if if they didn't come out. Well, they 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 let off they or they surrendered the first goal of the game, and I was like I was sitting next to 
my boss, uh, like managing editor of the hockey news, Ryan Kennedy, and we just like looked at each other and we're like, like, are we going to be, is it going to be safe to like leave the building? Like after this, like it's, <laughs> you could tell, and you could tell that like everyone's patience was just so shot. Like anytime there was a missed pass, anytime they didn't shoot immediately, anytime, whatever, like there was just like an, a, like an audible, like, Oh, come on. Like, like that kind of thing. And, and even still like in a win like that, Justin Hall got booed. Like just himself. I mean, like you won. You did a great thing. And and look, listen. Based on his play up to that point, a hundred percent fair. A hundred percent fair. But um, it just it boggled my mind. And then and then so they they pistol whip the Flyers and they win in like a definitive like just everyone was click. Everyone who needed to be clicking. Everyone who was struggling started like did that. You were led by your captain. You you played physical. You stood up for each other. You didn't take any shit. Great. And then the Bruins come to town, and yes, they're going through their own calamity, but, like, this is the best team in the league. They're 10-1. and one. They're at the top of your division. Also, like, they've, they've embarrassed you on many occasions. They embarrassed you, embarrassed you on three occasions in the last, like, decade, and they're, like, you know, they're, they are synonymous with your failure. And you come out, and you, you play maybe your best game of the year. Like they, like, they legitimately at least came out, and they did an incredible job of just, like, dictating the pace of the play instead of instead of playing down to their opponent um and then and then on top of that like you have adversity by Elias Samsonov who is like you know the only thing like the, he's like the levies just sort of keeping the flood from killing your goaltending you're basically killing your whole team but like he's the only healthy goal you got available and then he goes down on a penalty shot on a goal that he let in mm-hmm. and and then Eric Schalgren comes in, who's who had like an eight seventy six going into this game, who he, looked unplayable. He's just a guy. <laughs> he's just a guy, and yet he stops all his shots, and you win the game. And then you travel immediately after that to to Raleigh, North Carolina, to play another one of the best teams in the league in in, in the Carolina Hurricanes. They're rested. They're at home. You're playing within eighteen hours of your last game finishing. And you go out and you you beat you beat them pretty handily too. And Eric Schalgren puts up maybe his best performance as a leaf other than his shutout debut. The vibes are, like I said, 180 degrees. Yeah. Everyone is, is having fun. And I'm telling you, man, if Keith Petrozelli goes in net and he wins his first start. Oh, crazy. I, I have, I have a, first of all, I have a folder on my, on my phone of Sopranos memes ready to get, <laughs> to get fired off for that when that happens. But also like that will, that will take the vibes to another level. He's got the Myrtle build. He's six, six and he's Ooh. 180 pounds. He's got the pay I'm on, build. <laughs> dude, I'm 185 pounds and I'm 5'10. This guy's 6'6. Six, six, he's the same amount of <laughs> same he weighs less than I do. It's crazy. Wow. Damn. Yeah, I it, it was crazy with the 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 Carolina game because it felt like like I didn't I didn't actually catch the game, unfortunately. I was, I was a little I little, don't oh really? You had better little, things to do on a Sunday than watch a team you don't care about? <laughs> I well, yeah, I yes, which was just lay in bed and in, in, in yeah, agony f- from yeah. <laughs> from the night before. But um I saw like just kind of like how the, the discourse was kind of going on Twitter and it seemed like everyone already had the excuses lined up and kind oh, of yeah. had the like already were like getting angry and just chalked it up to a loss. I know Nick, like our buddy Nick was mm-hmm. already was just like, I'm not watching this shit. Like he was they're preemptively just, pissed. He was just like, I have they're not going to win. <laughs> I have a screenshot of James Myrtle himself going scheduled loss. Oh, <laughs> like <it's>, yeah. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> like, Myrtle jinx. <laughs> Myrtle jinx. And yet like, look, they, and, and look, to be fair, like you look at the, you look at the deserve to win o meter. You look at all the underlying numbers. Like the Leafs got outplayed, but they Some, don't ask you how. They ask how many. Exactly. Sometimes, well, sometimes you got to win those games. The Jets, yeah. The, the Jets played a game where I think Vegas had ninety seven percent on the deserve to win o meter, and the and they got a point out of it in OT. And then I think the game before it was like seventy six percent for the Kings, and they beat them. So like. You know, it's not necessarily you know what you want, but you got sometimes you got to get those wins where your goalie just you know stands on his head and you know you get a couple lucky bounces. And uh, Didn't Steve have like a bunch of golden knights that needed to score in that game, and he was like losing his fucking mind because did he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had like he had like Eichel and and uh, like Mark Stone, and he like needed them to oh. do well, and yet they had a 97 percent <laughs> chance of winning, and they fucked it up like. 
Oh man, Connor Hellebuck, uh, two years in a row is is <laughs> fucking Steve over in the fantasy. I, chat, in the fan- I love it so much. <laughs> he just can't escape him. It's great. Oh man, man. Uh, anything and- to do with Steve's downfall, just uh, love it. I love Ian's downfall. <laughs> oh, you know what? Ian's downfall does make me je- sexually happy. So it, it, I, you know, I'm so glad to. Uh, I I really wish that I was playing you or him this week just to you know to really beat down the fact that i i won that trade oh which like God. it's so obvious have you talked about it on the pod i haven't talked about it on the pod no okay I so let's to... talk about this trade let's okay talk about this. so we need to get down on this trade. all right fantasy <laughs> hockey trade um oh god who did i give up i gave up it's jonathan... an eight team league it's an eight team league so so not 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 super deep i gave up jonathan huberto rasmus Dahlin, uh I brian it off if you want brian rust and austin matthews mm-hmm. for elias Pettersson. Sebastian Ajo, Adam Fox, and Connor McDavid. Who I was playing Ian that week, and I beat him by 70 points. And he was projected to beat me at the start of the week before he made that trade. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> you gifted me that win. I owe you a win now. I, you I got to take a dive one week, I guess. Just, just uh, don't get your goalie starts. <laughs> Seriously. Like it's, um, oh, my God. It, it was, the funniest thing about it, too, is that since that trade, like I think that was maybe like a week and a half ago, and mm-hmm. on the first night that that trade happens, um, my camera's all messing up. Um, on the first night that that, that <laughs> of that trade happening, Connor David goes out and scores an, a hat trick oh and gets God. an assist. Uh, within a couple of days, Elias Patterson has a five point night. The other day, Sebastian Ajo had a hat trick, um, and Adam Fox is fine. Like, don't get me wrong, Rasmus Dahlin's having a great start to the season, but it, it's funny. Ian is like. I would say one of the smarter people in regards to like, oh, you know, absolutely. You know, hockey and advanced stats and this and that. But I feel like he just doesn't apply it to our fantasy league sometimes. <laughs> like, I don't, see, I, I, I get buying low on Matthews, but it's also like, but at what cost? You're, you're, one of the things that you're getting back is Rasmus Dahlin, to which he, like, I would say, you know, with the, the start he's had, I would say he's at about an, an equal value level to Adam Fox. Like, so I don't expect Rasmus Dahlin to have, you know, to continue the way he does the entire season. Yeah, you're also selling high on him. Exactly. Well, that, but that's what I mean, though. Like, I, it, it, if, if I'm Ian, like, I, I don't even need to look at hockey reference to see his shooting percentage and assume that it's in like the 20s or 30s, which is not normal for a defenseman. But I don't know. We, we always, I always love when, um, when there's crossover episodes with people who are in the Dangle Navy because I feel like at some point we all just uh, stop talking about uh, hockey news and we all just chirp each other. A hundred percent. And like, I've made some dumb moves too. But Ian, like, this he he gets he gets impulsive. You know, <laughs> like I think he just I, I think he just wants to make a trade for the sake of making a trade. Like he doesn't care who he gets back or who he, he just wants, like the the action. He craves the thrill, the sick sexual thrill of <laughs> trading in fantasy. And it's just it's 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 being his downfall. You know, he's in last place. And Ian is, I would say, like in terms of like actual sort of like if I were to put anyone as like the GM of a hockey team, it would be him. You know, he's yeah. got a brilliant hockey mind. You know, he's smarter than than all of us, basically, when it comes to, like, quantifying games. There's a reason why, like, you know, he's he's held the positions he has. And yet he gets behind the wheel in a fantasy league. And we're and it's the one it's the one area in life other than Chell where we're able to just windmill dunk on this guy. I love it. He needs to be humbled. <laughs> I, I always want to read to you how he came to this trade. So I sent th- that trade offer to him before. We were going back and forth with a bunch of crazy things. And then he 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 countered it, sent me back another one. I countered that one and sent back another one. Then he was like, you know, I don't even like that trade more than I like more than the one you sent before. And I'm like, which one? And then he sent it all. I'm like, yeah, you know, Sebastian Ajo's kind of shooting is kind of really high. Yeah. And I go, but, you know, I think I'd still do that trade. And he goes, I'm still hesitant on rust, <laughs> but maybe I'm off on that evaluation. I think you are, TBH. He goes, since we're both a bit hesitant, it's making me think that this might be the fair version of this trade. He goes, fuck it. Should we just pull the trigger? <laughs> My brother. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> For the love of God. Yeah. I love him. I love him so much. He's if uh, any trade. If your GM made a trade by going, <laughs> fuck it, let's pull the trigger. 
Can you fucking imagine? I mean, isn't isn't that what what happened with uh, the Felino trade? The with oh, actually, yeah, that's forth. exactly what happened with the Felino trade. And how'd right? that work out? <laughs> Not good. Not good, man. <laughs> Oh man! Um, all right. Well, I'm sure uh, us talking about our fantasy league is great oh content God. for everyone. But um, I guess there's a couple things we could talk about before right, let's do it. before we head out. The one thing that I found in absolutely insane. Uh, so Matt Kachuk gets suspended two games for fish hooking uh, uh, Jonathan Quick in the eye, uh, and mm-hmm. then uh, at in I think it was the same day Josh Anderson got also two games for like boarding which like don't get me wrong looking at the josh anderson one dangerous that should be two games but it's it's insane the level of like the lack of what's the word um consistency consistency thank you jeez brain fart um (laughs) (laughs) oh excuse me um it's it's, i I just don't get how you have matthew kachuk a guy who like has been suspended before who has a suspension history who very clearly does something that is you know arguably if like de- if not definitely an intent to injure yeah like i i listen i That's can not under- a hockey play i can understand if he's in that scrum and he's like you know maybe i'll just kind of poke his mask a little bit but you can see him like curl it to get yeah. into like the cat eye of of jonathan quick's like mask like what if he actually ge- genuinely did damage to to quick's eye like that could completely end a person's career and We've like, seen it do that to people before, and it's and again, I think the the biggest thing that comes back to is like it's not a hockey play, like no. at least jo- Josh Anderson's one is like you know it's a bad hit, but like it's in the heat of the moment. It's it's you know it's in the heat of play where you know hockey's a fast sport. Sometimes you make the wrong decision, whereas like Matthew Kachuk is like I'm just gonna try and kebab skewer you because uh, you know I want to get under your skin. Like I I it just would. I just don't get it. I don't get how the, those are the same length of suspension, even with considering the 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 suspension like like history. Like I, I'm yeah. not sure if if Josh Anderson has much of a history, but I'm sure he's no Matt Kachuk. They're but. two rough and tumble guys, we'll say. But like, it, it all comes. First of all, I, I don't want to gloss over the fact that the Josh Anderson hit was fucking shocking. Oh, like, it, it was, was bad. really bad. I thought I thought it would. It, like I saw that and I'm like, it's not going to get it, but it should get like five games like right there. If Brendan Shanahan was in charge still, that would have, it would have been a five game suspension because if you look at that hit, like he, it, that there's intent to injure on that too. He, he starts going from like his own end. It's it, from basically like the hash marks of his own end skating full force and then, and, and full force just uh, dumps just a uh, bl- Petrangelo right in the numbers, right in the numbers. He's not even looking, doesn't even, doesn't have a chance to brace, doesn't anything. Thank God Petrangelo wasn't like, thank God Petrangelo wasn't fucking crippled from that. Or like he didn't like smack his head on the boards and like, you know, get passed out or something like terrible. But then you look at the Chuck thing and you go like, yeah, that's a, that's a deliberate intent to like hurt someone. Like that is not, it's one of those plays where it's like, it's not, it's not a hockey play gone awry. It's not two guys fighting for a puck and one gets overzealous. It's not, you know, it's not like, you know, they, they were fighting each other and like this, this was, he was like, how can I fucking stab this guy in the eye with my stick? Like just to get at him. And that's terrible. And it all boils down to the fact that George Peros is like, it would be difficult for anyone to be as bad at their job as George Peros is. George Peros is an embarrassment to the NHL. Like, long, he is he is terrible. How long has he been in that role? Because I feel like it's been like uh, almost 20, a, it, like it feels it feels like it's been a decade. I I know it hasn't been like it's it's just insane to me. It feels like everyone has been talking about the the inconsistency from George Peros's you know player safety um, in in air quotes. Uh, for so long now, like I just don't understand how there hasn't been any sort of like move to someone else, even like front facing wise. Like the NHL should mm-hmm. know that that like fans think that this is bullshit this and guy. and that he's just say he's just doing stuff and just giving out suspensions. There's so many theories about how you know he's got his buddies that like he used to play with who he's going to be more lenient on. Like yeah, if I'm the NHL, if I'm trying to be you know taken seriously compared to like the NFL, the NBA. I mean, first of all, they've got a lot of ways to go, but one of them would be like, oh, maybe um, not having it so that people just think that like, you know, it, it's all buddy buddy depending on your player safety. It's like, oh, if you if you played with this guy back in the day, then you know 
you're only getting one game, don't you? Oh, it's just a, a maximum allowable under the CBA, $5,000, you know? I have any idea how small $5,000 is to, to NHL players. They won't even notice it. It's that's that's like it's a cup of coffee for us. Yeah, it's nothing. It, it's it's legitimately nothing like it will not. It's like, uh, oh, I, I went out. If I if, if like how how awesome would society be if I was able to go out, take like a two by four and just smack someone in the face with it <laughs> and then go like, oh, your punishment is you have to the your punishment is you have to pay for someone to like Uber Eats. I don't know, like KFC to their house. That that's, like, that's basically what it is. That's how you can apologize to me for beating me up when you see me on Thursday. Okay, yeah, 100%. <laughs> that sounds great. I can't wait. Yeah, I'll Uber Eats you a single roll of Tums to the arena again. Sounds good. <laughs> Have you told that story on the pod? No, I haven't. Oh, please tell it. Oh, now. God. Okay, so uh, we'll take this opportunity really quickly. Uh, so yeah, talk about both, Easter Seals. And, both and, both and, Mike yeah. and I are, are raising money for Easter Seals. You should go donate to my page and not Mike's, but you can also yes. donate to Mike's if you'd like to. Uh, it's just on my Twitter uh, as well as Mikey's Twitter, I'm sure he has it uh, either it in, in his in his bio or something. Um, it's in my bio, so um, please go and donate to Easter Seals. It's a fantastic organization. They do a lot of work for uh, children with disabilities, along with their families. You know, making sure they have the equipment they need, providing um, you know access to like things like summer camp um, to make sure that you know they don't aren't left behind and are able to uh, have the social fun that uh, you know us able bodies that they deserve. That they deserve exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so please go donate, um, and uh, w- donations will be taken until I think uh, Thursday. I guess like is right when. up to it. Pretty much right up to it. I mean, but also in general, if you miss the cutoff, still go donate. They're a fantastic yeah. organization. Um, so, <laughs> so usually the way it goes is that um, you know you arrive the one night. It's usually on uh, the day before Remembrance Day. Um, and y- you have the draft party. So that's when you know the the final cutoff for every team. Um, every team to raise their money is, and then you draft your player, and then you have some drinks, and you hang out, and you have some fun, you meet some people. Um, so last year, we we had some fun. Then we at the end of the night went back to our hotel room, had some more drinks. Uh, I some more fun. I Steve Dangle, Steve. which was supposed to be an <laughs> I was supposed to be icing Mikey. I asked Mikey to go get Steve me got something. Caught in the crossfire. Yeah, <laughs> it's this is the most like. <laughs> it's so nice but also so so mean because it's just like i was like hey mikey can you grab me uh my food from the microwave and he's like no and then steve just goes i'll get it and grabs it and then <laughs> and then he's like okay I, great um anyways. yeah, you were like mike go grab me my food i'm like am i your fucking maid no you go get it you're closer <laughs> to it and then steve's like that's okay guys i'll go get it gets it sees a giant thing of smear off light and has to drink it and on top of that too later after that um, on the Saturday nights, so we play all our games on the Friday, Saturday night, Brad, Ian, uh, another guy oh, named God. Mike, uh, came over to my place, uh, to watch the <laughs> Leafs game. And, and I guess without me noticing, someone put a, a, another, ca- uh, Oh, I lost you. Hello. Oh no. Oh no. One moment. Uh, hello. Are you here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's keep her going <laughs> without okay. without noticing. Uh, <laughs> without noticing, It'd be a really deft at it here. Uh, and so yeah, and, and and so without Bradley or Braden, if you want to put it, um, that that's your real name. It is. Uh, you know, without me <laughs> noticing, snuck a uh, snuck a a, a a smear off ice in my in my microwave as well. He loves to put it in the microwave apparently. <laughs> and on and so on on the tuesday after that keep in mind this happened on the saturday i didn't i i just didn't end up using my microwave uh until and then on tuesday at like 11 in the morning on a work day i open my <laughs> microwave to heat up a, a cup of coffee and i see a big thing of smear off ice and being the upstanding citizen i am i didn't just like pour it down the drain and go like oh guys i, I, I iced myself huh <laughs> I, I like i drank it and so i'm like somewhat buzzed at like 11 in the morning on a tuesday <laughs> I had to like, wor- I had work to do. Like I had shit to do that day. And I'm like, God fucking damn it, Brad. Like you, uh, anyway. An outstanding citizen, as you said. Um, yeah. But hey, anyways, back to the, the main part of this story. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we had some drinks the night before the tournament. And then the tournament is the next day. And we had the first game at eight in the morning. So don't know if you know this, alcohol, hockey in the morning doesn't really mix too well. Uh, so we go out, we play our first game. And I'm sitting in the dressing room and (laughs) Mikey, Mikey was sitting uh, kind of like in between my legs in front of me. And I just went, 
can we switch? I need to lay down. <laughs> <laughs> and so Mikey sits on the on the on the bench, and I'm sitting there just like I'm yeah. laying down. I am, and oh. I wasn't playing. My, you know, I still fucked up me, so I wasn't playing. So I was the coach. So I was I was able to to you know go get things for people. Yeah. While they so. Were playing. So I ended up uh, in in my time of need. I paid I think eleven dollars for like the yep. tiny gas station like roll of tums to be Uber Eats to me, because I was in such shambles. And I will say this, and I stand by this: that is the best eleven dollars I've spent in my entire yeah. life. It was completely 100%. rejuvenating, um, and it made my day so much better. Regardless, uh, I will be bringing my own tums this time, as Good. as I know my own uh, myself. I know my body. We will likely my... need them, all of us. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. Ex- is... Good. I would say the Easter Seals tournament, like the the Air, the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic, has it is responsible for the worst hangover of my life too. Yeah, in, it, like we're in 2019. Like it was my first year doing it, and me and Ian uh, uh, were there. It was it was before it was before the Dangle Navy era. Um, and so it, I remember like just going there, the draft party was pretty hype. I remember not drinking a lot of water that day for some reason. Like I was really busy. I think I was still, <laughs> I was still in school actually when that happened. Ooh. I was still, I was still at, at U of T. It was my final semester there. And so, <laughs> yeah, I know. And so I, we went out there and I was staying in this like just piece of crap hotel in Oshawa. It was like a residence in like in, in downtown Oshawa. Like it's not meant no frills no chills i almost you know walked in on ian and his girlfriend you know that kind of thing and so it was it was great uh and i was like super jealous you know that that she was getting to enjoy him and i wasn't you know every everything <laughs> all that but and so after so after the draft party wrapped up and this is like 9 p.m like people people are filing out and then i hear like oh there's an after party and, and steve and i are were just chatting and then someone was like oh yeah doug gilmore's having an after party in his his in his hotel room so we were like oh we'll go check it out this is steve before he has a kid too so he's like, you know, he's that's able, very important. It's very important. So Steve was like fun back then. You know, he was able to do stuff. <laughs> now he's just now he's a dad with responsibility and like a ba- a broken back or whatever the fuck. And like a broken back and like he has actually like be an adult and you yeah. know all that. Ugh. Um, and so we go there and it was like just packed this this hotel room that's like packed to the brim with like former NHLers and like media people and just like random people and we and the main cup. Um. The main the the main cup uh, uh, that we win, it's like a Stanley Cup t- type thing. And it's supposed to be for the team that raises the most money. And uh, and so we got it. And it ended up being called the Syphilis Cup because everyone drank out of it. This is before COVID. Like literally, uh. I, I would say like 200 people drank out of that cup. I <laughs> drank more that night than like I could possibly think of. I remember at one point, like Billy Smith, Hall of Fame goaltender, <laughs> Billy Smith, four-time Stanley Cup winner, Billy Smith, is like cornered me in the corner of this of this of Doug Gilmore's hotel room and he's yelling at me about how Mike Babcock is actually the answer and I need to write about this immediately. And I'm like, I'm not doing it right now, Bill. How'd like, that work like, out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally I'm not even kidding. Like I would say two days later he got fired. Like That's it was insane. hilarious. Oh my and God. so and so I wait I get back to my I get back to the hotel room, like fall asleep, and then our game is at it's at eight in the morning too. And so I set an alarm for like six AM so we can like get up at least we can like shower or do something to to revive myself ian had gone back by this point so he's not like he didn't go super out and i wake up and my phone is like stuck to my face like i fell asleep with my (laughs) face on my phone and the alarm is going at full blast and just none of us woke up and we ended up having to like change in the hallway and if you look at it if we took pictures after if you look at the pictures of it my face is like twice the size it usually is because i'm like so like you know how like you get like bloated basically when you're on a when when you're yeah. hungover yeah my my fa- it looks like I got stung by like three bees in the <laughs> face like it's <laughs> it was it was insane and I'm sure you played your best hockey uh, you've ever played in your life right you know what there's some, there's truth to the Michael Jordan flu game that's all I'm saying <laughs> I was I was absolute ass it was like the first time I was on skates in like three years because I used to play high levels and then I just gave it up and. It was it was bad, but I had Ian as my D partner. He's very hard on himself in terms of how good he is in, in person. He's he's better than he says he is. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, Man, he was, what a fun he was decent. I I I'll be honest with you. I've I've been looking forward to uh, this trip for like so so long oh yeah and I we've just, been looking forward to getting you here man. i just i just miss the boys you know it's it's I nice because because there's Daddy all the, myrtle 
Oh, we, and yeah, Myrtle will be playing this year. Myrtle, like, last... could come last year. Ugh. COVID, man. But... COVID was brutal. It was. Um, yeah. Anyways, I... We pulled that off, like, it, in the middle of COVID, you know? Yeah. Oh, last year? Yeah. Like, it was... Yeah. L- luckily, things weren't weren't bad, though, at the time. So, it wasn't, like... It was winding down, but it was still, like, the... NA, like, it was still, like, the Senators that weekend had, like, 15 players in COVID protocols. And we're, like, all together, like... But inside we were, each other basically in this but, dressing room but like, we were we were double that was a double vax event though i think yes like, yeah so at yeah. least at, at very oh oh yeah because i last year i remember they they looked at my man oh yeah because you guys what did you guys have like for your we COVID? had virtual we had virtual ones like we had like we were able to put in like our apple wallet and stuff and but like was it like a qr code like what was, yeah, it? was a qr code okay yeah. so we had like physical cards as well as the same type of thing where you know you just would add it into your uh, you know, you take a screenshot of your QR code and that worked for you. But obviously that QR code is connected to your database. And I remember last year, I can't see that. <laughs> oh, hey, there, there you are. Yeah. You know, steal, steal your information. <laughs> you, you, all you'll know is my date of birth and that I've had multiple vaccines. There you go. Boom. But no, Boom. it's yeah. You had your actual physical card and, and they wouldn't let me in for like a good 15 minutes. I remember sitting there yeah. being like, like I literally came here from Winnipeg to play in this tournament. If you're going to be like, uh, we can't verify you. So, and I'm like, I literally am like showing them my, like my appointments that I made, like my email reminders or yeah. whatever the fuck. <laughs> I would have oh, like, man. if they didn't let you in, I would have like taken your bag in and then like gone to the back door and just like being like, all right, get in here. <laughs> like, I would have been tossing hands. That's for sure. Yeah. The, the two very nice ladies at the, at the desk, <laughs> they would have caught those hands for sure. <laughs> the volunteers that are just trying to like make this charity tournament go well. Go, yeah, you would have go off without a hitch. Down. Yeah. You know, yeah. try, to, try to provide safety and everything. Yeah. Fuck exactly. those ladies. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can cash these hands. Yeah. If they uh. fish and they can cash these hands. No, it's, so in conclusion, George Perro sucks at his job. <laughs> Is that how we got here? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, jeez. Oh, well, what an episode. I mean, there. Uh, what else is there really to touch on? Uh, honestly, not much. Like we could joke about Ryan Reynolds and buying the sen- senators, but that would that, be good for them. I think it'd be great. It would be Boom. great for them. I think if they, he does that, I think they should like announce it as like a, in like uh, the next Deadpool movie that's coming out. Like have it as like a post credit scene where like. Brady Kachuk is just like comes out and says, Hey, and um, the, the entire world other than like the niche audience of hockey goes, who, who is that? Who, what? <laughs> who, what are the Ottawa senators? <laughs> he's even wearing his Jersey. They're like, I don't get it. <laughs> is this, is this like, like the, the royalty free, like sports team that they create in, in the Marvel cinematic universe? I don't get it. <laughs> What's an <in> Ottawa? <laughs> What's an auto? This would force you to watch an MCU movie, though. So there you go. I would. I would never. Honestly, I've yeah. I've seen a couple here and there, but like, no, I, no, I mean, but... I saw Deadpool. Deadpool's good. But... Yeah, it's it's got it's got boobs and and stuff in it, so I'm, <laughs> I'm good with that. Boobs it was swearing. also it was also funny. Uh, it was but... also good and funny, and there's blood and all that. But you know, yeah. <laughs> just dude stuff, you know, <laughs> just guy stuff. Spike TV. <laughs> Yo, man, <laughs> oh, Spike TV. What a time to be alive. I need more mansers in my life. <laughs> There's the like that that Family Guy thing where it's like Spike TV stu- stuff, dudes like, and it's just like a it's like a monster truck noise, like some beer cans opening, like a woman going like ah, like it's, it's like yeah, that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, oh, well, yeah, like, like I said, there's not really much else to touch on, mm. uh, so we might as well wrap it up. Uh, Mikey, sounds great. My friend, my brother. Thank you so my much for joining Christ. me. Um, next episode, Liss will come back. Uh, I didn't actually give her off the, the, the show for anyone actually wondering. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Mikey, plug yourself. Do, do your thing. Uh, at Mikey Stevens 81 on Twitter, read the hockey news.com. It's lovely. Uh, you know, lovely content that I work very hard on and, uh, donate to, to Brad and I's Easter seals pages. Uh, well, we'll yeah. like it's, it's on Brad's profile. I'm going to tweet mine out later tonight great cause and uh yeah this is a great little great little show you got going here brad much much appreciated appreciate uh i was i was joking uh in the week coming up uh, that you know i just need the the leafs to completely get dismantled and then having you Mm -hmm. on the show would be perfect um but luckily 
we had some other shit happen. So luckily, <laughs> luckily, yeah. luckily in quotes, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, anyways, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on, uh, on Twitter, uh, at Canty size, uh, and I'm at NHL chunky. Um, and then, you know, follow us on TikTok. Same thing at Canty size. And, uh, if you're on the YouTube, uh, please like, and subscribe. Yay. Um, but yeah, thanks you. Thank you all again for listening and watching. Have yourselves a wonderful week and stay safe.